Hello, Code Crew. Welcome to the Core Data series. In this lesson, we're going to go through what Core Data is, its benefits, and how you're going to use it with Xcode. First of all, what is it? Core Data is Apple's local object graph persistence framework. Now, before I scare you away, in simple terms, it's a way for you to store data on your device locally and then retrieve it later for use. The data stays locally on the device, so it's not a solution for sharing data with other users, and it's not a solution for syncing data across multiple devices, although some of that can be done when you combine Core Data with CloudKit. Next, why should we even use Core Data? Well, assuming you need to store data in your app, some benefits of using Core Data include, number one, it's a first-party Apple framework, so it plays nicely and has a tighter integration with other Apple APIs and frameworks. Number two, being a first party framework means that Apple is going to make sure that any new technology it releases will work with it. At least I'd like to think that Apple would make a bigger effort to make sure that core data plays nicely with anything that they release. Number three, you don't have to install any third party SDKs, which means you don't have to work with CocoaPods or trying to keep third party code libraries up to date. All right, now for some drawbacks of using core data. Number one, it's not a remote database solution. Although syncing across devices should be able to be done with CloudKit. To be honest, I haven't looked into this very much myself yet. Number two, the classes and methods to work with core data may be confusing at first. So there's a little bit of a learning curve, but I hope in this video series, I can simplify that for you. Number three, you have to retrain your brain to think of core data as an object graph persistence framework. Object graph persistence framework. Let's take a look at what that means. It all has to do with how you interact with core data. You see, with traditional databases, you explicitly insert, create, update, and delete data from the database. Now, even though under the hood, core data is using an SQLite database, you don't have to explicitly tell core data to insert, create, update, or delete. You just create and work with objects in your app like normal and behind the scenes core data will manage the data persistence for you. Let's take a look at a diagram to see how this works. Okay, so let's say you have two classes, family and person. The person class contains some properties and the family class has a property storing the person objects for that family. You create a family object and several person objects and then you relate those person objects to the family object. Now you want to store it in core data. How do you do that? Well, there are a few core data components that are needed. One is the persistent container. You can think of this as a representation of the core data store or database. However, your objects don't interact with the persistent container directly. There's a layer on top of the persistent container called the managed object context. Think of this as sort of a data manager layer your objects will go through the managed object context to be stored or retrieved from the persistent store. Now these objects in memory, along with how they relate to each other, is called an object graph. When you store the objects into core data, all of the data in the properties along with the relationships are preserved. In other words, the object graph. When you retrieve them from core data back into memory, you can get them back in the same state they were in before. So that's why they call core data an object graph persistence framework. Now to complete our understanding of how core data works, let's revisit our diagram. In previous lessons, I've shown you how to work with JSON and decode them into usable objects in our app. This process of changing the data into a different format and back is known as encoding and decoding or serializing and deserializing. Well, core data needs to do the same thing here it serializes the object into a format that can be stored in the underlying SQLite database, and then it'll deserialize it back into the objects in memory. The code or functionality to do that serializing and deserializing process is with a class called NS Managed Object. So if you want your class to be able to be captured in core data, you need to subclass NS Managed Object. That gives objects of your custom class the ability to be stored with core data. Okay, so now your objects can be serialized and stored with core data. However, when you want to bring that object back from core data, how does it know what format to deserialize that data back into? In other words, if you're trying to bring your person back, how does it know about your person class and what properties your person class contains? Well, here's the final piece of the core data puzzle. 
In this example, we use the person class that subclasses NS managed object. Well, you don't actually create and write this person class yourself. Instead, there's a visual editor where you have to define the class in the core data model. They call the class an entity and the properties of your class are called attributes of that entity. Then after you've defined the entity and attributes, in other words, your class and its properties, you generate the Swift classes from this core data model file. It's just a command you run from an Xcode menu and it'll generate the class files for what you've defined in the core data model. The generated class will automatically be a subclass of NS managed object so that core data can serialize and deserialize it. Then you use that generated class like you would any other class and core data can now store objects of that class and bring them back when needed. So let's do a quick recap of how we're going to work with core data. You define your entities and attributes in the core data model. Then you generate your classes from the core data model. Then you get a reference to the core data persistent container. From the persistent container, you get a managed object context. And through that managed object context, you can create objects and store them in core data for retrieval for later use. Now core data has a stigma of being hard to understand and use. I hope I've demystified it at least a little bit for you in this video. If you were able to follow this video and understand how core data works, please confirm with me by leaving a quick comment below. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that this is a great video and it'll help the video get more exposure. So thank you for that. In the next lesson, we'll do a real example of using core data in Xcode. All right, I'll see you there.